Hi, we are right in the middle of the Future of Free Cities conference, and we are having a conversation with Patrick Friedman, who is the executive director of the Seasteading Institute. Uh, Patrick, what is seasteading? Well, seasteading means to create new cities on the ocean, uh, and the idea is to enable startup countries to let people who have an idea for a better way to run a government to actually go create it and have people come live there if they like it and kind of create a market where lots of new startups are trying new forms of government all the time and they only win if they attract customers who are citizens and grow and we can learn what works better for how to live together. And how does this differ from uh, constructivism, for example, in Hayek's sense? Well, the idea here is that we're enabling the trial and error process of discovery that Hayek talked about. I mean, he says that entrepreneurs, it, you know, they, they have to go do experiments to figure out what customers want and what products will work. And we need to apply that same mindset to government. You can't just create a set of laws or a set of institutions and know that it will be a good government. You have to experiment with trial and error and different things. And how does seasteading differ from landsteading? Well, right now, every piece of land is owned by some country. That country has a monopoly on the laws on that piece of land. So you can't experiment with new rules and new institutions on land right now. Governments won't let you. But the ocean is empty, it's a new frontier, and the law on the ocean is very flexible that you can associate with any country to have your sovereignty through them. And so it's a competitive market for sovereignty. And so we can have many of these startup countries uh, each negotiating a different treaty with some existing country for what they're allowed to do locally and what things like national defense are done by the other country. And we can create this market, which is how all ideas advance, all technologies advance when many small groups can try many new things and see what works. It works for everything and it'll work for government. So uh, you hear these ideas in the libertarian circuit, for example. But does this apply to people of other persuasions? Absolutely. Everybody benefits from when a technology gets better. And often the people who care most are a small group who really want the technology. But over time, as it gets cheaper and it gets widely accessible, everybody uses it. So, for example, libertarians are a group who right now, they say government is very different from what we want. We want, as customers, we want to buy a very kind of government than any country that exists today. So, of course, they're deeply passionate about having a way for people to make new countries so libertarians can get what they want. But if we see people trying new ways of doing things, new ways of living together, then all people will learn better ideas. We'll learn things that we can copy in countries on land, banking systems that resist recessions better, uh, medical regulations that protect the customers without stopping progress. I mean, every government can be improved, no matter what you want from your government. The way you have right now is probably not doing a great job of it. No matter what your values are, you could probably see government meeting those values much better than it does today. And the way any product improves, the way any product gets better at meeting its customers' needs is by competing and experimenting, by trying different things and having the ones that work get people, get capital. And again, government is the same. We need experiments at how to meet people's needs. What are the usual objections that you hear when you convey these ideas? Well, one is just whether it's even possible to live on the ocean. It's, it's such a dangerous, harsh environment. And there we point to cruise ships, which are already floating cities. Another is that governments won't let you do it, uh, that they'll go and send ships and stop you. And there we say, you know, we, we want to talk to governments and learn what they won't allow and, and, and respect them. And we'll work with other governments to, again, have their sovereignty be what we use to plug into international law. And we think that we can get a, a lot of freedom and a lot of ability to experiment with new things even while respecting existing governments. Governments care much, much more about what you do on their land, on their territory. That's what they get the most violent about. Uh, they don't, you know, tend to, the United States does not invade Portugal or the Netherlands for having looser drug laws. They're very active in Latin America where countries are exporting drugs into the United States. But countries will go intervene for mainly to grab resources or when they see that other people are, are not letting them exercise their own sovereignty. 
if they think that you're hiding terrorists or building weapons or exporting drugs, but just for things that you do locally that don't affect them, countries don't actually intervene for that. Well, thank you very much for sharing these ideas with us. And thank you very much.